Is it tragic to you that he's seen as the architect of the nuclear age, that some of his creations led to potentially, some of his work has, has led to potentially still the destruction of the human species, some of the most destructive weapons? Ever. Yeah. Uh, but I think even more general than him, I, 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 I gave you all the virtues of curiosity a few minutes ago. There's an interesting book called The Ratchet of Curiosity. You know, a ratchet is something that goes in one direction. And that that is written by a guy who's probably a sociologist or philosopher or something. And he he picks on this particular problem, but other ones, and that is the the danger of knowledge, basically. You know, you're curious. You learn something. So it's a little bit like curiosity killed the cat. You have to be worried about whether you can handle new information that you get. So in this case, the new information had to do with really understanding nuclear physics. And that information, maybe we didn't have the sophistication to know how to keep it under control. Yeah. And Fermi himself was a very apolitical person, so he wasn't very driven by, or, he, or at least he appears in all of his writing, the writing of his wife, the interactions that others had with him as either he avoided it all or he was pretty apolitical. I mean, he just saw the world through kind of the lens of a scientist. But you, you asked if it's tragic. Uh, the, uh, the bomb was tragic, certainly on Japan, and he had a role in that. So I wouldn't want it as my legacy, for example. I mean, that, but broader to the human species that it's the rapture of curiosity that we uh, we do stuff just to see what happens. That that curiosity that uh, in sort of my area of artificial intelligence that's a, been a, a concern. There on a small scale, on a silly scale, perhaps currently there's constantly unintended consequences. You create a system and you put it out there and you have intuitions about how it will work. You have hopes how it will work, but you put it out there just to see what happens. Yeah. And the, uh, in most cases, because artificial intelligence is currently not super powerful, it doesn't create uh, large scale negative effects, but that same curiosity as it progresses might lead to something that destroys the human species. And the same may be true for bioengineering. There's people uh, that, you know, engineer viruses to protect us from viruses, to see, you know, how do, uh, how close is this to mutating so it can jump to humans or, or going, you know, or engineering uh, defenses against those. And it seems exciting and the application, the positive applications are really exciting at this time, but we don't think about how that runs away in decades to come. Yeah, and I think it's the same idea as this little book, The Ratchet of uh, Science, yeah. The, the uh, Ratchet of Curiosity. I mean, whether you pursue, take curiosity and let artificial intelligence or machine learning run away with having its uh, solutions to whatever you want, or we do it, it's, I think, a similar consequence. I think uh, from what I've read about uh, Enrico Fermi, he he became a little bit cynical about the human species towards the end of his life, about having observed what he observed. Well, he didn't write much. Uh, I mean, he died young. He died soon after World War, the World War. Uh, there was already, you know, the work by Teller to develop the hydrogen bomb, and I think he was a little cynical of that, you know, pushing it even further and. Uh, the rising tensions between the Soviet Union and the U.S. and it looked like an endless thing. So, but he didn't say very much, uh, but a little bit, as you said. That yeah, there's a few clips to, to yeah. sort of uh, maybe picked on a bad mood, but in in a sense that uh, almost like a sadness, a melancholy sadness to uh, a hope that waned a little bit about that. Uh, yeah. perhaps we can do like this, this sign. This curious species can find the way out. Well, especially I think people who worked like he did at Los Alamos and spent years of their life somehow had to convince themselves that dropping these bombs would bring lasting yes, peace. And it didn't. And, and that it didn't, yeah.